Before we start talking about Beat Detective, we need to understand the concept of sample-based tracks and tick-based tracks. Now, every MIDI and audio track is one of the two. It's either sample-based or tick-based. Audio tracks, by default, are sample-based. That means that each region is tied to a specific minute and second, a specific time. Whereas MIDI tracks are tick-based by default, they are tied to specific bars and beats. Now, what does that mean? Well, first of all, this indicator here, the clock, means that this track is sample-based. I can change it to tick-based, which is a metronome, or I can change this one, which is tick-based, to sample-based, just by dragging on this icon. And by the way, if a track is really small, I can always choose it from my menu here, samples or ticks, from this little drop-down arrow. So what does it mean for a track to be sample-based or tick-based? Well, let's take this audio track, for example. If I play it back, it sounds like this. And here's my MIDI track. Each MIDI note is playing the slice of a loop. When I play them together, they're perfectly in time. So with this audio track, which is sample-based, if I change the tempo, the position of each of these regions will be tied to the time ruler, not to the bar and beat ruler. So for example, if I change the tempo to 240 beats per minute, it was 120, so I'm moving twice as fast, it will still be four seconds long. But instead of being two measures long, it will be four measures long. I'll cover twice as much ground. Let's see what happens. As you can see, it's the same loop. It's moving the same speed. It's still four seconds long, but this time it's four measures long. Let's listen just to make sure. And the same thing happens with a MIDI track that's sample based. This MIDI track is two bars long. When I change the tempo to 240, you'll notice that it is now four bars long, but it's still four seconds long. Let's make sure it didn't change at all. And hear it both together. Okay, that works great. But what if I do want to slow down the loops and the audio if I change my tempo or speed it up? Well, then I need to make these tracks tick-based. Now watch what happens when I change this from sample-based to tick-based. Instead of these regions and these MIDI notes being tied to my minutes and seconds ruler, I'm going to be tied to bars and beats. So when I change the tempo from 240, which is it is now, to 120, all of a sudden, you will see that instead of being four seconds long, the loop is now eight seconds long. The regions have spread apart because they're staying fixed to the bar and beat ruler, not to the time ruler. And the MIDI notes have spread out as well over four measures. Let's listen. So the rule of thumb is, if you want a track to stay fixed no matter what happens to the tempo, then you want to make sure that that track is sample-based. A sample-based track will never change based on tempo changes. If you do want a track to change based on tempo changes, whether it's audio slices or MIDI notes, then you must make the track tick-based. Then as the tempo changes, the bars and beats will change, and the notes of the MIDI file and the slices of the audio file will change. And just to prove that one more time, I'm going to change this tempo now to 240. We're right back to where we were, a four bar loop, and let's change it to 360. And now, still playing in sync, everything has been crushed down to be four bars long, but now it's less than three seconds. So in Beat Detective, it's very important to make sure when you are asked whether a track should be sample-based or tick-based, remember sample-based will not change its position no matter what happens with the tempo, and tick-based will.